Delegate Mike Cornby joins us via telephone. Miguel, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Bill. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, man. How about yourself? You getting worn out down there? Four days left, Rob. Four <laughs> days left. Four long days, but um, it's actually gotten uh, a lot more fun in the last week, in my opinion. Mike, before Rob starts hitting you with hard, hard questions, I have a, <laughs> I have a softball question. You have spent the last two months going through a life-changing experience based, funded in part with my tax dollars. Are you going to come back a changed man? I, I think I changed about a weekend, Bill. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I, you know, I, I sat and learned for a couple of weeks, and now I'm just kind of getting into high gear here. I've kind of hit my stride and found my role down here. I think uh, um, uh, I'm really... Uh, starting to get the feel of uh, of how things work and how you get things done down here. Well, I was obviously being facetious with my question, but since you were serious, let me come back in a serious tone. I've remarked uh, uh, to Rob off air two or three times, uh, based just on observation and your your comments, your insight. I've been impressed with uh, with uh, the information you've been able to provide and the action you've taken for the last couple of so months. You've done good. Well, thank you, Bill. I think there's a – what I didn't realize before I came down here is how much of the work gets done um, before session uh, behind closed doors and socially um, with your other um, colleagues. I could handle the social part of it. <laughs> uh, you'll be surprised how much of, of uh, the camaraderie and, and the people that you make friends with or you get along with, how much more you can get done uh, if, if people like you. Man, he's serious today. I, he I, is. I, yeah. I am. He's not, he's not messing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, told, I told Rob yesterday when I, when I talked to him, I said, I'm finally actually getting some stuff, stuff done down here, and they're not even my bills. Yeah, so all the levity we have planned for today, Rob, we'll just throw it out of the window. <laughs> We're going to be serious. <laughs> throw, the, throw the levity out. Throw, go for brevity, not levity. Hey, uh, Mike, let's talk about that, though, because it's a couple times you've thrown that out there that you're figuring stuff out and figuring out how to th how to get things done. What kind of things have you been working on and getting done or moving along? Uh, I don't want to get too specific, but there are some things like, um, you know, I, I'm really into, um, and I don't think we're going to get it done this session, but I, I do think that I'm starting to broker, if you will, um, you know, we've got 26-week unemployment in, in, in West Virginia, and we're, we're trying to broker between the unions, uh, or the, you know, the, the laborers, if you will, and, and, and workforce and things like that, and trying to fix that issue. Um, and I think there's some good conversations behind closed doors so that we can kind of get that done. Um, there's a number of other issues that I've uh, kind of got myself involved with that I never thought I would. But I seem to – I'm a compromise kind of guy. If we've got to work together to come to some kind of compromise, then let's work together and get something done instead of just arguing. All right. I want to know, because you're on education, uh, yeah. I know the Secondary Schools Activities Commission comes up a good <laughs> bit in education. You know yeah. how I feel about the SSAC. I've made it no yeah. secret for 30 years on the radio in this town how I feel about it. What's happening? Tell me, tell me when this group is going to be answerable to somebody besides their own handout. So, uh, obviously, the legislation I put forward uh, matched the Senate one. It didn't – I put it forward very, very late, so it didn't get out of the Education Committee. We couldn't run any House bills at that point. However, there were two pieces that – two pieces of legislation that came out of um, education that I thought were, were – were, one was a happy compromise, and one is a very good step in the right direction. Um, the first one was the transfer rule. Um, it was kind of open. What we did was we did a committee substitute in there to make it you can transfer one time in your four years in high school and you can, it, without losing your eligibility, and you can only transfer between a public and private or a private and public or if a school doesn't have, uh, offer that activity. Um, so I thought it was a good compromise. Um, it's still there's still people on both sides of the issue on that one. Um, I think it will go to the floor, um, and, and, and we'll have that argument there. The other piece of legislation that that I thought was even more important was the ability to audit the WVSSAC, and in that legislation, it does name them as a government entity, which I think is even more important.
So if uh, you say you do or don't think that part will pass this session? Uh, you know, I, I don't know about the 100 people in the floor. I, I believe both. I, I'm going to fight for both to pass. Uh, I'm going to see both on the floor. So um, it, it, it's going to be dependent on how long judiciary and finance can go today, and we'll have a better idea of, of what's actually coming to the floor tomorrow. What's the, uh, what's the importance of uh, being, a government, being identified as a government entity in this case? So for me, it's important, um, Bill, because – the, the Supreme Court ruled last year regarding a young lady down in Charleston, I believe it was, um, who transferred from a public school to a private school and lost her year of eligibility. And they took it all the way up to the Supreme Court, West Virginia Supreme Court, I believe. And uh, the Supreme Court says, you know, as long as they're not a government entity, they can do whatever they want. They can make whatever rules they want. Um, so I think this addresses some of that to try and rein in some of that uh, king power that they have. Um, I like the idea of them being audited by the legislator. Um, so their finances, the, the things they make, the, the rules thing hasn't passed and probably won't at this point. But it's at least some kind of oversight from our rules committee. Let me pick up on that very quickly. Uh, audited by the legislators, would that be audited by the legislators as a full body or no. as a committee or as a uh, uh Non. It's going to be a committee that I head, Bill, so it'll be a very <laughs> fair hearing. <laughs> very <laughs> fair. Well, we have a uh, rules committee that meets um, when we're not in session and kind of looks at things like that. Um, they're already aud- – um, I believe they're already audited by the auditor, but those are just strictly to make sure they're not stealing money. I'm not accusing them of stealing money. That's, that's got nothing to do with this. This is more of – the uh, decisions they're making um, financially and the rules they're making um, are, are, can be looked at and, and can be audited from time to time is the wording. Okay, so, the, not any. so that the audit committee uh, finds yes. a pol- their fallen policies that, that, is not a, that do not think appropriate. What happens after that? Do they refer, do they refer to the full body? Yeah, so they would actually refer back to um, the committees here and say, hey, this is what we found, or this is what we're doing, this is what we recommend. And then the committees would decide what they want to do with that information and how it goes. Um, So it's a very small step, but it's a step in the right direction, in my opinion. But a small step, but does it have teeth into it? I've not not seen the teeth yet. It could have teeth if there is something that is being done wrong. And, you know, again... The, this was a Senate bill that came over. I, I, it, it didn't get um, adjusted too much in education. There was a, there was a lot of support for it. We, you know, the, the committee liked it. Um, I believe it goes straight to the floor. It went to judiciary. I, I, I can't be sure. I, I forget now. Mike, uh, the article uh, on the Metro News website, House Education Committee Struggles with Governor's Curriculum Bill Before Passing It by Jeff oh. Jenkins. There's a lovely photo of you, by the way, right in the oh, middle there of the is? You, You're like uh, that guy that used to hold the John 316 signs <laughs> exactly. at the football games. <laughs> yeah. Whenever there's a camera in Charleston, you're in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, if it was in motion, we could see kind of Mike moving to better position himself. It'll be sure yeah. to have my my correct profile, my right or left. That, um, that curriculum <laughs> Curriculum bill um, was a circus. It really was. It went round and round. It, it got. It came from the governor. You know, he he had mentioned this in his State of the Union, oh, a State of the State address, I say, um, that he wanted more transparency, um, and it it wasn't going. The, the intent wasn't to publish every lesson plan and every book and every, all that stuff. The intent of the bill was just to give a vehicle for parents to look at what curriculum maybe this semester, next semester, or, you know, or maybe even next year. Um, and it got mired down into a whole bunch of stuff, but we eventually got it passed. We got everybody in line, and we got it done right. All right. I know in the article it quotes Dale Lee, the, S, uh, the president of the WVA, saying, you don't need to publish it. Anybody here is welcome to go into a classroom any time uh, that they want to, uh, to see what the curriculum is. That was his and, and, and that's great, but um, 
the reality is parents are working until a lot of times five, six, seven o'clock at night. They're spending time with their kids in the evening and they want to be able to look at it um, with their kids online. Um, I would compliment Berkeley County, especially we, we I think we are already um, kind of on the forefront of this. Um, I've had amazing experiences with the apps and the, the, the things that we use in Berkeley County. I've always been able to see my kids' curriculum, lessons, plans. The teachers have always texted, emailed me daily, weekly, whatever it is. So um, this wasn't from any personal experience. Um, I think we're blessed in Berkeley County with, with the, you know, the, the systems that we have in place. Um, but this was part of the governor's state of state address, and he wants to make sure all the districts and all the counties are coming and being forthright with their uh, curriculum. One of the criticisms that was made early anyway, uh, that it was putting an undue uh, workload on the teachers. In fact, one of your legislators made the comment that he is mm -hmm. going to staple baloney to his face and stick it in a fishbowl of uh, barracuda. Yeah, Mr. Longenacre, he gets yeah. a little fired up, but he doesn't know what he's talking about half the time. Um. <laughs> but but, but, he's, but he is a teacher. He is a teacher. He is a teacher, and, and, he, and he's very passionate. Yeah, and he speaks he, very well. He's a good buddy of mine. And he um, and, and he's making the point that there's only so much you can put on the teachers and that's just not the case uh, the, with this bill so what happens in most districts and most schools uh, you will have a curriculum committee who decides which which because uh, if you go on the state website you can see we have eight different history curriculums for every and they can pick and choose a state approved curriculum this would just take from that committee they would say these are the curriculums we're teaching in our school and those are the curriculums they post it's not we're not looking at anybody's homework or making any teacher do anything the the, the county would say these are the the, the curriculums that are being t taught in your schools and if it's down to the school the school would say hey we choose to do this curriculum um so it's more of an administration um um thing and it's not classroom by classroom so, so it does not. Uh, it does not put any burden on teachers. No, I'm thinking. Okay, the other way around. Does it reduce the originality or the flexibility of a teacher? No, it does not. They they still get to do whatever they're doing now. Just the parent, uh, guardian, grandparent, uh, or student can look at future curriculum and the curriculum that they're they're looking at, so that they have a a chance to look at that. That that's all this bill does. Um, in the in essence, you could get mired down in weeds and say, you know, the administrator is going to push this down the teachers. That is not what it, what we're looking to do here. We're, we're leaving at the county level. So you mentioned eight statewide curriculums. Uh, does that well? I, I say eight. I, you know, I just use that number as it. Depending on the subject, there could be many more or okay. quite a few less. Yeah, you've answered my question. I was going to say yeah. uh, a, 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 a sophomore science class. Uh, as opposed to first grade class, you have yeah. Your I different mean, they're, different. They're, they're, the teachers, the schools, the county boards of education have many options of a state approved curriculum, and there, and, there, and there's tons of them out there. You can read every single one if you want, uh, but to find yours in your classroom or in your school, you would have to go. Okay, which one? And then, you know, yes, I think we we can go down and talk to the schools, but in reality, that's not what happens most of the time. Uh, Mike, a question that I asked Jason earlier, uh, and it's it's about the um, uh, Child Protective Services uh, yeah. and DHHR. Uh, Lane Dill Dill was on uh, yesterday, and she made the point that the caseload for the uh, uh, the caseload of employees mm -hmm. in uh, child child protective service is ten times greater than other states. Uh, the only way you can address that is more staff. Is there yeah. is there appropriation increase in at least in the eastern panhandle, that will address this this caseload discrepancy. So I think a couple of things. Uh, I did give Rob Adam Burkham, a colleague yes. of mine, um, his number. I'd love you guys to talk to him. He he knows about this. He's been working on this for four or five years. He knows about uh, it a lot. Friday, more Friday morning, 8.05, Mike. I have him on the show. So, you know, I'm going to defer those okay. kind of things to him. However, what I will say is, you know, the governor did give – 
pay increase to CPS workers in the Eastern Panhandle at the beginning of the session, right? So we are addressing it. They do understand that we have an extraordinarily high caseload. It is being addressed. I just, it's not my area of expertise, Bill, so I can't really speak to it because I'm not in those committees, but I do know it is definitely being talked about. Well, fair enough, uh, uh, Mike. And the only reason I'm raising is because Lane uh, mentioned yeah. it yesterday, and it was in such graphic terms. I knew there was a caseload issue, but I did not realize the magnitude and, and, of the problem. And I will say this. Uh, you know, I, I definitely agree that we have a caseload issue um, uh, up in East Panama, but um, the horror stories I've heard from, from some smaller counties and the caseloads they have with much less people and much much more egregious problems is also an issue. So I think this, this is statewide, Bill. This is, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love the Eastern Panhandle, but from the, the stories I've heard, heard that this is, this is county by county. Mike, Senate Bill 593, requiring every state agency to develop a locality pay plan for state workers, is being mm-hmm. considered by the House. And at some point along the way, it looks like you'll get to vote on it because Delegate Amy Summers said she'll vote to get this out of committee, and I presume that if she will, there are others like-minded who will do so as well. Something similar got voted down last week. Uh, Delegate Paul Espinosa said, I don't see the harm in allowing agencies to try to think through this issue and see how they might be able to address the problem in each of their departments. So this would allow each department to come up with some type of plan for implementing locality pay without actually uh, dedicating any dollars to it at this point. Basically, it's a study. What do you think Mm -hmm. the odds of this getting through the House will be this time? You're not going to like my answer, um, Zero. My, yeah. the, 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 the body down here calls it EP pay, um, and it's just the reality of it. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we were six short the last time. I mean, I'm trying. If I can convince six of six more to get it together, I'm going to do my best, but um, I'm not feeling a lot of love. Let's just put it that way. What's their main objection to voting for it? Because it's Eastern Panhandle pay. So that's what they're, they're calling it. And, and their, just, their fear is that their teachers will move or their state employees will move to Berkeley County? Yeah, oh, their fear, is, their, 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 their comment is, you know, why? Why? Why should we give you? Give us, give us back our coal severance tax. Give us back our gas severance tax. We'll give you EP pay. Why not give uh, them back the coal, their coal severance? Uh, I, I'm, working, I'm working that angle, too, yeah. Bill. Uh, I've talked to our county commissioners. I'm like, we don't need it. I think it equates to a couple hundred thousand for us. Um, we'd far rather be able to pay our um, our employees more um, so that we're competitive with around us. I just, I, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I just don't think it's going to pass. I, I know, I know. I'm supposed to say we're working it, and we're supposed to say that. I think we're six short. What about it? What about the, Amy's suggestion of viewing it as a housing allowance instead of making an actual pay, providing a housing allowance? We're six short. Well, that they won't go for housing allowance either. We're six short. <laughs> All right, you use this reverse logic. If it's true, if it's true that people will move here to make more money from yep. other counties, then it must be true then that people will leave here to go places yep. where houses are cheaper. Yet that's not happening. Yep. It's not happening. <laughs> Um, we, we, we've got to come at this from a completely different, I think Jason's bill is fantastic, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge vote for, I think it's a great idea. What's, what the argument against that is, well, those reports are going to come back and say, you guys deserve more money. We know that already. We're still going to vote it down. Well, Dale Lee's suggestion is that we increase the local share, which will give the counties more money and then the counties can then take care of the locality pay themselves. I agree. I think it needs to come from the local share or, um, and I, I think that's the, that's the way if we spend our money on our people, um, I think that's the way to go. Is that an idea to be broached next session? I think that is something that is currently being worked on. Yes. I I miss Uh, it. I'd be happy to put that forward next session. What do you mean by local share? Local share of what? Of what? Yeah, so, and that's that's where it gets complicated, right? Um, so we've got to come up with a system where we can take our tax dollars that we generate in the Eastern Panel and have the ability to spend those on our employees, not just teachers, but our employees throughout the public um, 
um, hiring system, CPS workers, uh, you know, anybody in government in the Eastern Panel, essentially, um, we should be able to have a say on what we spend our money on. And, and that's the angle that I think we can get this over the finish line for. Um, we just got to craft that vessel. Um, I think we're six short on this vote still. I'm trying my darndest to uh, get seven people to, to flip. Um, but, you know, as uh, some people in leadership said, you know, you, you eat it well one bite at a time, and we're getting closer and closer every time. Very good. Hey, we're just about out of time, Bill, so your question would have to be a very short one, like, Mike, what's your middle name? <laughs> Mike, what is your middle name? <laughs> Cassin. <laughs> okay. Michael, no, thank, I, hey, we're, we're thir- like 30 seconds. You're down okay. there all the way through Saturday, correct, for, for the legislation? Just, just yeah, session we finished Saturday. Saturday midnight. I will be driving to Fairmont on uh, Sunday to watch my son in the state finals of robotics. All right. Go, Dexter. Uh, be safe. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike.